Okay, I sat down and did some listening with these on my main system and on this rack here in front um, of my other system that's more of what I call, we consider my uh, lower budget system consisting of uh, kind of mainstream and lower end receivers and then kind of a mid range late 70s uh, HH Scott receiver. But in this case, I'm using the uh, Sony down here which I think is the uh, STR-185. And it's a pretty entry-level, just two-channel stereo receiver. I don't even think it has subwoofer outputs. It's just a very basic stereo, stereo receiver, which I picked it up for 30 bucks used. Um, uh, that's probably about what you can usually find them for. And it's actually, it's really not that bad of a starter just you know stereo um you could still run a subwoofer if you needed to um um long as your subwoofer has the uh high level inputs or whatever but um i'm using that and then oh uh, here we get a little closer yeah there we go yeah it's just a good old sony uh yeah yeah strde 185 just a good old stereo receiver with treble and bass balance, and it's got bass boost, but I'm not using it, and A, B speaker switching. And um, all the uh, treble and bass are just set at zero, no bass boost, nothing. Just And then as far as the DAC, since I play all my music off my music computer, I'm using this uh, Sound Blaster Play 3 USB, and to this headphone, and then this runs down, it's just a plain old... Uh, uh, auxiliary or 3.5 millimeter uh, jack to uh, RCA on the other end that's plugged into the back of the receiver nothing fancy or nothing special this is all just basic stuff you know even uh, I haven't reviewed this yet but even the FX Audio DAC X6 I use in this I'm just running the good old mom and pop RCA cables but anyway to kind of figure out where these things are crossed over because i took the other woofer out there was too much glue and stuff on it i couldn't read the value on the capacitor so what i did is uh and i've done this with other speakers too um i'll just get on youtube um or wherever i can generate a sine wave and just start like these i was guessing at around probably five thousand. i was a little high um so i went down to four thousand and at 4,000, there was pretty much, I mean, I'll kind of cover one as much as I can or hold a piece of cardboard over one and try to see what I can hear out of each driver separately. And at 4,000, pretty much not getting anything out of the tweeter. You're getting plenty of sound out of the woofer, but nothing out of the tweeter. And then when I uh, switch to a 4,500 hertz sine wave, then I'm getting sound out of both again. So somewhere around 4,000, I mean, I might have been able to dial it in a little bit more, but somewhere around four to 4,500 is where that capacitor is filtering out the lower frequencies from the tweeter. So, and eh, it's really, it's still what I, about what I expected. And um, it, it, to me, it's, I mean, it's, you already have, I mean, there's not much they can do about it because these speakers were built on a budget for people on a budget, a low budget, we'll say. And then uh, you're giving the six and a half inch woofer. It's not necessarily a very good six and a half inch woofer. A lot of work to do by uh, it's, you know, it's trying to cover, we'll say, 70 hertz to somewhere around 4,000, 4,500 hertz, which um, I listened to some. I have uh, Billy Joel's. I have a couple of Billy Joel 24 bit 96 uh, you know HD uh, tracks I listen to on here, and I listen to some Celine Dion, Adele, Blink 182, and it seems like, from what I can tell, the six and a half inch woofer is doing most of the vocal work. And being in where it's crossed over, and they're letting this thing run out at, it's going to, which mm, it can be okay, but. And some of the higher vocals, it, the uh, a good tweeter can reproduce that better than a a cheap six and a half inch woofer. Now, uh, let's see. 
for the uh, for the what forty bucks, fifty bucks these go for. I'm not complaining. Um, you yeah, you might be able to find some used bookshelf speakers that are better for roughly the same price. Maybe I don't know. Um, it's hard to say on eBay because the shipping is going to be a little bit. But as far as brand new speakers, these I think are still probably going to be the best thing you're going to find for forty or fifty bucks, at least that I've come across. Now, where the way they're built, like I said, does not surprise me. Um, and when I was listening to some of these tracks, I could really tell just because it's one of those things if you've never heard say a higher end speaker or higher resolving speaker, whatever you, it's kind of one of those things you don't know what you're missing until you've had it and lost it kind of thing. So to me, when I listen to these, I can almost immediately tell the woofers out of control. It's not being limited by anything. It's just kind of letting it, it's just, you can always seems like with a woofer, you can kind of tell when you turn it up and it's not being uh, filtered uh, it just they always seem to get harsh you, they you're the listening becomes fatiguing and it's just not pleasant anymore and then uh, the tweeters picking up around four thousand um you can hear them you know they're you can obviously hear them they're doing tweeter stuff and you know, you know they're doing their high end but uh, to me the tweeters they i mean they have good detail but they just sound kind of empty they have no warmth or smoothness which i'm very accustomed to soft dome tweeters. I I don't really have well. I don't have any speakers that have l these kind of low end tweeters in them. I mean, they do they they do tweeter stuff. Okay, they do they tweet, but they just that's it. They just I mean in certain songs they sound great. I mean good detail and everything. But then other songs like some of the Adele songs with my other speakers, there's this smoothness. Um, of her vocals in the tweeter, and it's just because, you know, I have my speakers crossed over in a much lower point, but, um, yeah, I, to me, I immediately noticed it. A lot of other people, I could, you know, bring some of my friends in here, and they probably wouldn't. They'd be like, oh, these things sound awesome, and that's just because where they're coming from, they've never really heard anything, you know, way better. They just don't care. They just need some good speakers. These sound great. They get loud. Cool. Let's rock out, and, uh, you know, so a lot of people, that's just what they're looking for. So, um, it's not that they're bad speakers. Now, if they were a hundred bucks and they sound like this, eh, eh, they just no. But at 40 bucks, excellent. There's still an excellent value. And, and for movies, I played some movie clips and for movies, I was, I'm not a big movie buff or anything, but for movies, I think they're fine. Um, they can get a little harsh if you really like to crank your movies up and you, you know, I pushing a lot through them and it was the same with music they actually sound pretty darn good until you start to push on them and i was listening at a comfortable level in this space at about 75 to 80 decibels which is considerably you know most people consider that pretty loud or pretty you know and then once i started to push them a little bit more is when yeah i mean they then they start to get fatiguing they're not so pleasant to listen to my some of my other speakers I have that are higher end, and some of the ones I've built, I, I can crank them for hours, and they just they never, almost never, no matter how loud up, how loud you turn them up, they never hurt your ears. These things, you start to push on them, you kind of like, yeah, uh, just you need to turn it back down just a little bit. They're you know they're just they start to get a little bit harsh. I'd say that's probably about eighty five decibels ish in this space. If you have a bigger room, it's going to take more power. This space I'm in now is about the size of a decent bedroom. So uh, I guess you could consider that. I mean, these things are going to get plenty loud in the dorm room or, you know, a room that's not very big. Uh, you're going to be able to get them pretty loud without pushing too much power through them. So they should maintain their composure and still sound pretty decent. It's going to be in a bigger space where you're going to have to push more power through them. They're kind of going to, you know, they're going to fall apart a little bit. But, uh, oh, what else? Um... I mean, I don't, I hate to critique them too much just because of their price. And I, you know, when Dayton built these, they weren't out, really out to impress anybody, I would think, with the sound. More, they're trying to impress people with the price and what you're getting for the money. And they definitely did that. So, um, hmm. 
and, yeah, and then the system. I decided to use my this system because I'm assuming most people that are going to be buying these are not going to be hooking them to high-end amplifiers or, you know, Emotiva DAX or anything. So uh, I kind of went with more of all my starter low budget equipment and it's not that doesn't mean it's bad equipment it's just equipment that a lot more people are more likely to have that are going to be using these speakers so we'll uh let me get the camera adjusted here where i want it and get, make sure i'm where i'm supposed to be uh, oops for the sound demo here and we'll get it going and for the sound demo, uh, just to avoid all of the copyright BS going on with YouTube, um, some of my other stuff I did, it just it seemed like some songs, even if I only played them for five seconds, I was getting, you know, email from YouTube. So I'm just, right now I'm kind of done with playing actual music. So I have a list of copyright-free music samples that we're just going to go with. So here we go. I forgot to mention where I had the volume set on this in this space it's I'm gonna say averaging around 77 to 82 decibels so I mean if I guess if you want to know roughly how loud that is and you already have a stereo download a decibel app on your phone sit down where you normally listen to music open the app keep turning the stereo up till it gets to about 80 decibels that's about how loud it is for me right now in this space so Oh, and then the other bookshelf speakers I have up there are the Sony SS CS5s. And I'm not going to play those against these because they are usually anywhere from on the low end, 100 to 150 bucks. So they're kind of a whole different tier. But they're mostly just up there for size comparison. Um, they're another real average size bookshelf speaker. So they kind of just give you an idea of how they compare to other bookshelf speakers in this area the cs5 is actually a little taller than some of them so they're just up there for a visual comparison
things are getting a little hot in here. So I think that's where we're going to end it with the sexy song. Now, I don't expect anybody to actually hear what I'm hearing through this sound demo. These, I just do them for, because why not, you know? And uh, it may give you a little idea um, of how they sound. You, I mean, I don't necessarily, you're not, I mean, you might be able to hear a difference between like these and those Sony up there through something like this, but it's not going to be to the point of actually being in the room with them. So all I can say is for 40 or 50 bucks, these are excellent speakers. I mean, some of the things I complain about are things you're going to find on about any speaker, well, especially a pair, uh, you know, for that kind of money. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. Like a lot, like I said, uh, most people are not going to even notice these things at all. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. I mean, yeah, if you've had better speakers in the past and you're worried like, well, are these things going to sound as good as some, you know, some other speakers? Well, maybe not. But, you know, if you're coming from a Kmart shelf system or nothing, these are going to sound really good. Now, the, I wanted to address that 24 gauge wire they come with. That will work if you have nothing else. But getting the low end out of these things, you're going to want to go, I think the spring terminals, the biggest they're going to allow is probably 14 gauge. But if you can get some decent you know, 16 gauge copper wire. I mean, if you're gonna use CCA wire, you can, but you have to go to a larger gauge and 14 gauge CCA is probably okay. But if you can get your hands on, like I said, like 16 gauge lamp cord, like even if you go to Home Depot or something, they have big, they have rolls of 16 gauge lamp cord and it's, I don't know, it's like 30 cents a foot. It's not much, it's pretty, pretty cheap. So, I would only use the the uh, 24 gauge wires they include while you need them, but I, if you are using them, I would work towards getting something at least 16 or 14 gauge, um, as uh, using that small of a wire, the low end is going to suffer noticeably. Um, other than that, my little experience tonight with them, I haven't really noticed any other problems with them. I haven't had any buzzing or anything, you know. Uh, I'm having problems with the spring terminals. You know, I think I'm using 16 gauge in them. It fit fine, so. Um, I think, yeah, like other, many other people, I think they'd pair nicely with a small mini amplifier. Um, depending on how loud you're trying to get them. Um, being the 87 decibels, they're not super efficient, so they're going to take a little bit of power to push them, but most mini amps that are going to, you know, like a lot of the Lapais will you know, put out, I don't know, 10 or 15 watts will probably be enough. And a lot of that depends on how big your room is. I mean, if you just want to get these for a garage and get an old stereo, great. Um, and then for the home theater, they actually, it must just be my space because when I had the B652 Airs, they, I was using them in, in my bedroom. They just really seemed like they didn't have any low end at all. And just, I mean... I don't know. They just seem like they're dead below 100 hertz. And uh, these are similar, but um, it must just be the space. And I have better, you know, I have all these Harbor Freight. A uh, little tip for you. If you need some quick, cheap, you know, wall treatment, go to Harbor Freight and get some packing blankets. They're cheap and they're just thick enough. They, they'll kill a lot of reflections. But I actually have some decent sound uh, dampening down here. So I think that's what's making the difference. That's another tip. Um... If you're not happy with the way your speakers sound, or even these sound after you get them, consider what's going on in your room. You got a lot of hard surfaces and echoey, and you know, consider hanging some stuff on the wall or getting a rug or something to kind of treat the room. That can make a big difference. So, on that note, I hope you like. This is just kind of the way I do the sound demos for now. Um, anyone that's checking this out glad you came back for part two um yeah if you have any questions about them uh, i haven't decided if i'm going to keep these just to use them as a comparison for other things i get but uh yeah if you have any questions or anything else you want to know about them um i kind of hang out on the uh, hi-fi guides uh forum as well 
So, and there's, I mean, you probably, I mean, these speakers are popular enough, you, you're going to be able to find all the information you need about them anywhere. I'll post links in the description and places you can buy them and yada, yada, yada. So, it's late, I'm out of beer, and I'm tired. So, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Good night.